Hi, welcome back to the channel. It is not a great day for yacht spotting here in Imperia, unfortunately. It's the worst weather I've seen here for a while, but it is that time of the year now. Uh, as you can see behind me here, we've got motor yacht Kalela, 48 meter Palmer Johnson. Featured it before on the channel because there was a story circulating a few years ago, and you can look it up on YouTube, you'll still see the videos on there, that the boat was actually plated in gold and uh, as a result it cost four billion dollars it was complete nonsense but uh it did the rounds a lot of videos out there still talk about it today but it clearly if you plated a, a yacht in they actually gave the figure of the weight of the of the gold that they put on it if you did that obviously it was it was hundreds and hundreds of uh, kilos so anyway it's not gold it's it's gold in color but it's not gold in in substance so it is a, like I said, it's a fully carbon yacht. And uh, yeah, it's a 49 meter yacht, fully carbon. It was the largest boat uh, to be constructed in carbon at the time in 2014. Th this boat was commissioned, uh, it took four years to build this boat. And that, that, a super yacht normally takes around three to four years to build. But this is much smaller than the boats that normally take so long. And what I'm trying to say is, is that this boat took longer than its contemporaries for the size because it, it was the, the first vessel at 49 meters uh, or what's that 100 and, 160 feet uh it was the first vessel of that size to be built purely from carbon fiber reinforced plastic um so they built it out of that the hull that is and that's why it took a lot longer so it's four years in development um, it was actually commissioned for Timo Mohammed, who is the CEO and owner of Palmer Johnson. Uh, it was built in the, in the US Palmer Johnson shipyard, and it was the third to last vessel to be built there before they closed that yard. Um, interestingly, uh, this vessel can do over 30, 30 knots, which is about 35 miles an hour or about 56 kilometers an hour. So it is a fast trimaran and it is a trimaran that has three holes now in the last video in the last video uh, which was from a few years ago now you, you might if you've seen that video or you can go and watch it I'll put a link but they had at the time no passerelle and they just had a piece of wood a plank going from the the quayside onto the boat which looked ridiculous for on a, on a yacht that is made of well not made of gold but it is painted in gold but you can, as you can see here, the passerelle is, uh, is back on board now, so it's fixed. Um, I spoke to someone who was involved in the construction of this boat, and they said that the passerelle has been a constant problem for the boat. And it's probably got a lot to do with the carbon fiber construction. But anyway, as you can see, the, the, the um, passerelle is back on now. And uh, by the way, this is the passerelle, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the gangway and uh, it's raised and that basically is done so people can cannot just walk on on board uh, there, are, there are controls on the vessel to lower it when they need to interestingly the boat is connected to water and power you can see down here the blue one is water and the yellow one is power but i can hear a generator running so that's i don't i'm not quite sure it could be numerous reasons why they could just be doing a test of the generator uh, there could be a problem with the power supply. Uh, they might be running something on board which requires too much amperage from the shore power, so they're running a generator. Um, but yeah, there's a generator running, which you might be able to hear in the background. This boat here is a 40-meter uh, a yacht called Genesee, as you can see there. It is not a converted tug, although it looks like one. Um, it was built in 2017 new by an Italian company called Ocean King. One of the things that stands out about this boat is the is the beam, the width of the boat. It is woo, hello. <laughs> I just fell in a hole. It is huge uh, in comparison to the length of it's 10 meters across and 40 meters long, so it looks huge. But uh, I like this boat. I don't know what it is about it. I think I, I kind of like more practical, you know, explorer type vessels. Um, also, just in case you're thinking that they're discharging something over the side there, it's probably water from the air conditioning system or coolant from the engines. Clearly, if the engines are, uh, or 
generators are water cooled and they, they take water in through the sea chest to put into the engines or the generators to cool them and then they put it out over the side so it's not they're not discharging anything it's illegal to discharge things uh, certainly in the marina so don't worry about that but yeah very practical huge crane on the stern there to lift that big boat into the water um, yeah I like it it's about, about 550 gross tons um, and it has a range of seven and a half thousand nautical miles which is impressive for a boat of this size look at the bridge up there they can so the on the bridge they can go and they can look right down this right down this the, the stern of the boat which I like um, yeah it's got that uh, vibe hasn't it the the, uh, the working vibe so we've got uh, it's got to be uh, some social media person that owns that boat right maybe the person who invented the hashtag <laughs> there's the there's it's uh, one of its boats there in the water that's a Heeson yacht by the way all right so on this boat here you can see that the the uh, the nameplate's been removed from the stern um, I don't know what this boat's called there's no AIS um, interestingly there is a, a sign up there on the window I've just noticed I'll try and see if I can zoom in on that in a minute but what I wanted to show you here is that the nameplate's been removed that's a Jersey flag by the way if you're wondering it says it's, it actually says Jersey on it as well so look at this boat here this is a wooden hull and wooden superstructure wood hull and wood superstructure one of the things that is noticeable about it is that the, the portholes are tiny little portholes this is from 1934 it was built in 1934 so this is pre-world war ii and it looks like it looks like it's just being found in a barn <laughs> like we, they always say about cars a barn finds they pull some car out of a garage from you know 50 years ago and it's all covered in rat droppings and stuff this kind of has that vibe about it it has a top speed of 11 knots it has two engines that put out 94 horsepower each so yeah it's quite interesting but it looks like it's a project whoever owns that that's a project never seen it before it wasn't here I was here three months ago in Imperia and that, this boat wasn't here so this is a new arrival I love stuff like this this is a lot of history in this boat it, it looks like it's uh you know it's just uh it looks like a ghost ship that's just turned up uh you know with nobody on board after 100 years or something but this was built by camper and nicholson it's called bystander of man and it's a wooden hull wooden superstructure now what's interesting about it is um that it was it was actually used by the royal navy during world war ii in 1939 it was inducted into the royal navy and it was used um during the war uh, it's been owned by a lot of uh, people who were like rear admirals and stuff from the navy and stuff. it's had a really interesting life spent time in paris um, the vessel was not that long ago for sale for 1.8 million euros on the camper nicholson website and it had some beautiful pictures of the boat but um, obviously since then it's gone in, it's it's fallen into a state of disrepair and now it looks like it does and we, we were able to find a, a, it for sale I don't know if it's currently for sale because it's new here so it's quite possible that someone's bought it with the uh, with the idea of fixing the boat up so it's quite possible that it has just been sold but it was for sale on a website but we didn't have a date on it for 700,000 euros so come from 1.8 million to 700,000 if the if you own this boat uh, or if you know someone who owns this boat or someone who works on the boat please get in touch I would love to go on board just because of the historical aspects of this boat and there's some amazing stuff on the deck there some uh, brass searchlights and there's a you can see that up on the, the bow there you can see that on the flybridge there there's a wheel a bra it looks like it's made of brass and there's a, a magnetic compass housing which is also brass so i love anything like this so if yeah if you know who owns this please get in touch so like i said built by camper and nicholson in uh, 1934 it's a 24 meter boat 
uh, a, is a beam of just under five meters um, and a draft of 1.8 meters. It's a gross tonnage of 85 gross tons. I've just noticed uh, the even the rib, which is a modern rib, obviously, even that is a mess. The front part of the rib is punctured and then the boat's full of water. So in keeping with the state of the boat, the, the actual yacht, the rib is, is in keeping with that, isn't it? All right, so what is quite interesting here so you remember my video about Lady M? This is a uh, Alexi Mordashoff's boat, the guy who owns Nord. There's a very interesting turn of events with this boat. Um, obviously, couldn't come to Imperia without coming and checking on the boat. The boat looks the same, unchanged. The change is the security is gone. So I don't know what that means, um, but the security is no longer here. They were here the last time I was here. I was here for a few days and they, they were here the whole time so, and they were doing shifts you know there was a car here and there was they were ch I was watching them changing shifts and now they've gone I don't know what that means uh, there's still no ensign flying as you can see on this boat here there's an ensign uh, but on this boat no ensign so it doesn't look like it's fully crewed last time I was here there was two crew that I spotted that are living locally and they're just coming in daily to work and stuff like that so yeah I don't know what it means that the security is no longer here but because uh, they were here for months ever since the boat was arrested those security people were here and now they're not here so yeah interesting times the life rafts have been removed that's probably they've probably been stowed inside it could be that they were in a you know they were sent off because every every, uh, every so often they have to be sent off to have them have the gas canisters replaced and stuff so it could have been going through that process when the boat was arrested i don't know or they could have just removed them and stowed them inside just for safekeeping because they knew there was going to be no crew on board all right i'm going to wrap it up here i hope you've enjoyed this very wet limp area um it has not been ideal weather for yachting but you know this is this is the side of it that you don't see normally because normally i film on the nice weather in the nice weather so anyway hope you enjoyed it hope you learned a little bit i learned something today about the uh about some of the boats that we saw here but anyway like i said hope you enjoyed it be sure to like this video hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for future notification and let me know what you think what was your favorite boat today and if you know what's going on with Lady M and why there's no security anymore, please post a comment or get in touch. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.